Good evening, everybody. My name is Jeff Martin. Yes, I have a personal story, as we all do. I was, in 1994, a kinesiology honor student in excellent physical shape. I was a competitive runner, wrestled, and did a lot of weights. One morning, because of a dip two centimeters deep in the road, I came off a motorcycle over 100 kilometers an hour in a tree head first. I was in a coma six weeks and obviously not in good shape. Nope. I dwelled on these facts for years. And I could not believe I was going through this because of a dip two centimeters deep. Do I get that? Do I understand this frustration? Yeah. I get this, guys. I get it. From my kinesiology background, I knew the type of recovery I had in me to a certain extent. I knew in order to retrain, retrain, sorry, brain function would take a lot of effort, persistence, and knowledgeable therapy team to access all the abilities that were still there. Even though my situation changed, those abilities that made me, me, they were still there. I just had trouble accessing them. Oh dear. I experienced severe lethargy, extreme exhaustion, and remained awake five minutes at a time before passing out again. My memory was five minutes long. For example, my mother came in to see me in the hospital, was there about a half hour, left to get food, some real food from the cafeteria. Because we all know the food in the hospital is not, um, <laughs> it's not that good, right? She came back five, 10 minutes later. I couldn't remember her being there five, 10 minutes before. My left leg, and my arm was spastic and tight, lacking any control. When lying on my back, my left knee, almost at my chest, right arm was flexed to my hand on my shoulder. My left arm, black and blue and paralyzed. My left arm was eventually amputated after a visit to the Mayo Clinic in the States. I went there to get an expert opinion on my situation, the brain injury and arm injury, and what else I could do for myself. Oh yes, and I could barely speak audibly at that time. My lungs were so weak, I couldn't speak really. So yeah, guess what? I was overwhelmed, incredibly overwhelmed. It was incredible. Why? What do I do? Where do I start? What's ahead of me now? Yeah, I've been there. I know what you mean. I've been there. First off, feeling overwhelmed. With nothing in my life looking familiar, I was in a state of panic. At the first point where I could speak audibly, I asked my mother to go to church. I knew for myself, I could not do this on my own. I needed that support. To me, that was huge. This has been a steady and strong influence in my life ever since and will continue to be every day. I also dove into online meditations. Dr. Wayne Dyer, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Meditations are about repetitively redirecting your thought processes to create new pathways or patterns that will change perspectives and focus. The brain injury association is called pathways. And that's why you create new pathways in life to be a new you. When the brain controls your thoughts, my brain was injured. So it made sense to me to dive into meditations, an effort 
through training thought processes and patterns. The important to me was starting this rebuilding from the spiritual perspective level. I wanted my life to flow from this foundation. After years of meditation and spiritual work and time to time, I got it. I finally got it. I have an opportunity. What? Yep, I have an opportunity. Jeff, are you cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Jeff, come on now. What do you mean you got an opportunity? Everything I was before had changed. I was not that anymore. Can you relate? How do I uncover the beauty that is found within? I knew it was there somewhere. I just couldn't access those abilities in my change situation. And yes, it was even hard for me to see that beauty that made me, me. I had to create a new identity for myself. If I'm about doing this, if you're about doing this, I'm looking forward to what I'm creating now and in the future. If I'm focused on what's happened in the past, I can't embrace a new future. I'm focused in the past. Who am I? Literally, who am I? I realized my calling was to be an inspiration and empowerment to others. I wanted this. Becoming involved in the community with the Track 3 Ski School at Chicopee was the start of this re-identification. I was so enthralled in this experience, being able to go down on skiing even in my changed situation. I discovered I did have things I could do. I actually had a sense almost of freedom from my situation being disabled as such, as people call it. Um, I was on the ski sled and on the ski hill. I didn't think about that at all. All I thought about was not falling off the ski sled and rolling 40 kilometers an hour to my death. Jokingly, obviously. Um, hmm. In connection with my new, my, newly, my newly realized passion, I decided I wanted to get back to Track 3 Ski School. I decided to coordinate, design, and run a fundraiser for them by doing a race in Victoria Park on my own against myself in my wheelchair, about five kilometers long. I had never done this before. It was a complete growing experience for me too. I asked for donations, raising close to $10,000, of which most were mailed in from people who attended the event, saw online, or on TV, or the newspaper. That was awesome. Me reaching my abilities out to community around, to do what? To be me to inspire and empower. Because that is the new me that I develop every day. Reaching out again, I've been asked to do several speeches at the university and college levels of school, as well as for the Brain Injury Association. Keeping active in the community around has been huge for me. Even in times like this, with new socialization, sorry, social isolation. I join Zoom meetings with a few groups each week and meet with a handful of few friends each week as well. Of course, abiding by the guidelines for COVID, of course. But the most effective way of giving back is to stay, is to stay firm in that person you're creating on the blank slate in front of you and living above life's circumstances. Living by example. By this, I mean 
We are creating a person who is joyful, dedicated, or hard worker. You are still these things, even though your situation is what it is. That's a part of you. You become an example for others. For me, walking fast or as fast as I could down the streets of Costa Rica while I was there for several years, just loving life, dancing to the music in my head. I was being me, I was being me, not focusing on the, the negatives, my situation. You know, I was who I was above my circumstances. Guess what? People notice. Yes, they notice. Why? Really, why? Because they want some of that. Uh huh. They want that, man. They want that for themselves. Of course they do. You become an example for others. I do an integrity, that person you develop every day. Yes, they know some. Living in integrity for that person you're creating is what I stand for every day. I don't have a job as such. These things call me and I live this way powerfully every day. This is my calling. I come from that person who is spiritually connected, who is an inspiration, who is excited about the possibility life has. A compassionate, a compassionate, loving person. This is who I am. The brain injury defines an event in the past. I define my future. Coming from that spiritual foundation I meditate on every day, that's who I am. Hold an area of possibility in your minds. Create a pathway for awesomeness. Let your beauty shine. Thank you. Wow, what a very powerful uh, <laughs> message. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah. Any questions for Jeff? Uh, I've got one here, uh, Jeff. What, one of the uh, things that we talk about on our group group meetings quite a bit is what providers or what treatments did you um, undertake in order to help you on that road to recovery? How long do we have? Well, <laughs> just a few minutes. Uh, yeah, um, I have done uh, physiotherapy, uh, neurologic and orthopedic, massage therapy, and so do now, occupational therapy, um, rehabilitation, uh, recreation leisure, Therapy, um, I've done a ton of alternative medicines. I won't list off right now, but um, yeah, those are therapies I've done in the past. And, um, yeah. And which one do you think was the most helpful? Um, definitely the neurologic therapy. My neurologic rehabilitation therapist specialized in that type of therapy and was excellent in retraining the brain. Because after a brain injury, if you're not aware um, who was there, you have to retrain the brain how to do the functions you want to do by using different parts of the brain to do it. Okay. And just, um, my physiotherapist was awesome. She was incredible. Yep. Okay. And, and what about your um, friends? Quite often we hear from survivors that People don't quite understand uh, and, and appreciate what you've gone through. Can you talk a little bit about um, how you, how, what relationships um, maybe stayed and how we had to develop new ones? Yep, no problem at all. Um, for the moment when I was in the hospital, I had a few of my friends visit me. Actually, um, I was in McMaster University, kinesiology, as I said before, first year, it was on March break. The accident was. I had about seven individuals from residence come up to see me in the hospital one night. Unfortunately, I was in the bathtub. <laughs> and um, well, the visit didn't last too long, but you know, um, we visited for a few minutes. Um, 
I had a few friends in the hospital come to see me. Well, most came to see me actually at least once. But then, literally, none stay by. Really, none stay by. Um, you have to develop new friendships, and um, really, to do that, to send the speech, reach out to the community around you. That's how you create new connections. By being involved in the community around you, give back to the community around you. You can be recognized in the community for what you give back to them. And um, just um, you be more involved in activities in the community and stuff. Um, getting out there, you know. Right, and I hear you're a bit of a Rangers fan, so. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's something else that we talk about a lot is what new hobbies or what things do you enjoy that will bring you joy. Uh, sorry, you will bring you joy um, that you can suggest for other people to to explore. Yeah, for me, sports was always a big thing. I never watched Rangers hockey before. Um, I was in Hamilton University. Um, I seen one game before, but um, I love that. Um, I'd say be involved again. Don't isolate yourself. Um, get out there with other people and stuff. Um, stuff that gets your that makes you feel. Oh yes, that. I want that. Yes, yes, yes. Oh boy. You know, if you're watching TV and you hear you know, stories on TV about people who've done X, Y, Z, you start crying. And I'm very emotional now. That happens a lot. Um, stuff you find that really gets you going, gets, you in, that gets your heart going, that you just absolutely love doing and stuff. Um, that's just, um, yeah. Okay. Another question here, meditation was important for you, but how long did it take from when you had your injury to the point where you were ready to uh, start down that path? And what, what steps um, did you need to take in order to embrace that? Oh, good question. Um, for me, I know she was ready for it, but I didn't start meditations really until about Five years ago. So really um 25, 25 years after the accident happened. Uh, my father introduced me to some um breath work techniques and stuff um with meditation, I guess as well. But um I didn't really embrace that that well at that time. Um meditations with Wayne Dyer, Joe Dispenza, they mentioned on the um foundation there. Um, I purchased online their speeches, and each morning, I go in the morning bed, got my cell phone, turn the meditation on, get my mind focused properly before I start the day. Okay. Or get in bed before I shower any of that, sit in the ground, stretch, as I have to do for muscles, and meditate there like that. Um, keeping that in my life, I, I love the effects from meditation, the focusing my mind, even throughout the day. If I heard Joe Dispenza or Wayne Dyer say about, you know, I'm, when you're trying to focus on the positive in your life, you have to do X, Y, Z. Um, just very focus, uh, focus on the positive in your life. Close your eyes and actually feel. You gotta get the sensation in your body in that situation where you're really, really, really happy, you're excited about life and stuff, feel that in your body. And that's actually um, been a very powerful technique for me in making manifest, manifesting a lot of the things I want in my life and the meditations in my life. Just techniques like that they teach you in their lectures. Right. Um, when I first met you, uh, you pulled up in a car and uh, we met at, at Starbucks. I don't know if you remember that a couple of years ago. And uh, you were driving at the time. Are you still driving? I am still driving. Um, at the behest of Bruce, he's, you know, <laughs> he wasn't too sure I should be driving. Um, yeah, Bruce, boy, no problem, man. <laughs> um, yes, so, with, so how long, what did you do in order to adapt to, uh, you know, single arm um, driving? 
Now on the steering wheel, have that knob that tractors a lot of times have. And have a little clasp on the signal. And then a bar up and over the steering wheel to the right side. So I use my right hand like this on the bar for the signal. Okay. And, that's it. and, and that's it. you went and got a special training for that? Um, uh, Canada Driving School. Right. Did have that at that time. I'm not sure now, but they did have it, yes. A special, actually, a specialized trainer only does individuals who have physical mental challenges. Right. That's what, yeah, because yeah, some of the people in our group uh, do have some physical challenges. So I always like to try and make sure that people who have overcome those challenges when, when getting back out and behind the, uh, the wheel. Uh, so we describe that for them. So thank you for that. Um, another question is around technology. So uh, we've got a project called Brain Connect that um, we're trying to help people with their use of technology. Is there, is there a set of um, either software or hardware that you use that you find especially helpful besides your meditation? What, what other tools do you use? Um, hmm. I just am. Other people's opinions of me, how they're doing stuff. I don't care. Okay, but do you do you do you uh, speak to to type, or do you have any tools that help you? Oh, sorry, that's what I meant there. Sorry, Linda. Um, yeah. I've tried this voice to text dictation. Yes. But then you have a speech impediment too. It was too tough to use. Okay. Voice guides on my computer was too frustrating. Okay. For me. Um, I'll come back to that, Linda, the point made before. Other individuals, ideas myself. An example, I was walking, um, what was it? Ah, I was in the Flying Dog one time to dance bar in Kichwalu. Really had um, no older age range, um, about 40 years and above, 30 and above really, was what was there you know, normally. Um, I see grandma and grandpa on the dance floor dancing sometimes. They're shut down now, but when they open, I went there all the time, right? I had someone walk up to me, sir, what happened to you? My response to them, what happened to you? <laughs> and I walked away, you know? <laughs> you know, that's your problem, you know, not my problem. Yeah, no, it's just, um, yeah, um, I had some, I don't know why, that's just me, that's my personality. Right. You wake up, music's cranked up, man. I'm dancing every day ever since, all day. But you, um, so you, you do your own typing, you, you create your own presentation, yeah. so you just maybe take a little longer than people with two hands. No, I go faster than you, actually. <laughs> I do almost 40 words a minute. No 40 mistakes. words a minute. No mistakes, yeah. <laughs> do you have special training for that, or is that just practice? I myself. Okay. I use my toes. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. I can never tell with Jeff whether he's joking or not until a little bit <laughs> later. And he, and he always gets me. Um, so, okay, so that's great. Because one of the things that, that is so inspiring about you is that you, not, you don't let anything stop you. And <laughs> so um, that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you on tonight was to, to really talk about what are the things that people who maybe look at you think, oh, he can't do that or he can't do this? Um, you know, trying to, to share with, with um, people who, who may, you know, still have arms, both of their uh, um, ability to use that. What else can you tell us about what you've managed to overcome if you look back at your life before the injury and, uh, and now? Mm. Um, I was physically fit. 20 waist by a 43 chest before. I was very muscular. Um, that's not who I am. I am in here. I'm a person of integrity, inspiration, empowerment. Had to mute there, so I am. Um, myself, you said, I want to come on that though. You said before, people, you know how I'm always, I am who I am. I was joyful, nothing seems to stop me, right? If I am in integrity for inspiration and empowerment, and something happens in my life that stops me, 
Am I being inspirational or empowering? No, I live above that. To be, to be empowered, right? If I'm a person of happiness, that's what we recognize as. Also, you're really sad and stuff, right? Go through the sadness, then perk up again, be happy again. That's who I'm developing myself to be. That's my identity. That is who I am. Right. Well, what can you say besides that, right? Right. Hmm. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, I don't see any more questions coming through. Uh, I'm going to stop the video, uh, but thank you for speaking to us. This is the Brain Injury Association, Waterloo, Wellington, and this is our Survivor uh, Speaker Series. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.